Welcome back. This is Monty once again from uh, DPL Surveillance Equipment. We're a full service surveillance and security equipment company. We have lifetime guarantees and warranties on all the products. We have 24-7, 365 tech sales and customer support. We have perhaps the, li the uh, largest inventory of items that not only can you buy, but you can rent or lay away as well. In addition to that, we have uh, the largest inventory of items that not only can you buy, but you can rent as well. And I'm sorry, we have the the largest, also the largest uh, video library where you can see and uh, peruse the demonstration videos. Take a look at the, uh, the way we demonstrate the alarm clock radios, the GPS trackers, audio bugs, voice recorders, etc., etc. Excuse me while I try to wake up here. Uh, and then we have um, a very large articles directory. In our articles directory, you're going to find all sorts of ho hopefully interesting articles. Our article to teach you about um, uh, surveillance, uh, counter surveillance, anti terrorism, in addition to cybersecurity, like what you're learning here, um, active shooter preparedness, uh, you name it. We, we're probably covering it. And uh, so, if you have any, uh, any need or any questions in regards to bug detectors, counter surveillance, uh, nanny camera trackers, listening devices, etc., give us a call. 888-344-3742. That's 888-344-3742. Now, this particular session, uh, this cybersecurity news flash, this is the seventh in a series of cybersecurity news flashes that we have do that we've done, and um, we're, we're posting all of them uh, on YouTube, for instance, uh, as a playlist, of course. So, if you miss anything, don't hesitate to go back to YouTube and take a look at the um, particular. Uh, sessions that you may have missed out on. Uh, now, this particular session is called uh, How to Protect Your Toaster from Hackers. Again, we call it How to Protect Your Toaster from Hackers. Now, we're being a little bit um, facetious in terms of actually protecting your toasters because we, we, we just want to let you know that there are lots of devices in our homes and our office. Some of these, a lot of these devices are called dumb devices. They're, they're going to be your DVRs, they're going to be your wireless routers. They're going to be the smoke detectors. Um, you you name it. Your your webcam, your 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 security cameras in your home. See a lot of these devices, when they were designed originally, um, and and you know some of them go back ten or fifteen years in terms of some of these things in terms of when they were originally manufactured or, or released onto the market. Excuse me. No one anticipated that. When you start connecting uh, again the DVRs and the router, the routers, excuse me, and the um, the webcams, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that the hackers would want to take a look at um, at hacking into them because you know they, they, that this wasn't a major issue then, and and no, again the manufacturers and a lot of the security community we didn't anticipate that people would be trying to hack into them, but that's exactly what's happening now. So we want to take a look at, at that particular issue and uh, see what we can do, again, to lock down those not-so-smart devices, okay? So b before we get into that, let's take a look at some of the most current issues that are going on today. Uh, Spotify Free is serving up malware. Again, Spotify, the music streaming service, the free version, is uh, serving up malware. And... Um, Numerous users are flooding the music streaming service, Spotify's Twitter feed. They're going to Spotify's Twitter feed and they're reporting uh, that the freemium tier service has been hit with malvertising, a malvertising attack. Now, when we say malvertising, that's, a, a, of course, a combination of two words. That's malware and advertising. Typically, that means that um, services such as uh, Spotify and who, know, who knows, Pandora, all of these, not to, sort of, not to say that Pandora ha has had a problem yet, but a lot of times these services have um, advertising networks and um, built into the, um, the, the app. So that's how they can afford to have a, a free version. But what happens, unfortunately, is hackers take advantage of vulnerabilities within the ad serving network that, that uh, Spotify uses, for instance. And when they compromise the advertising network with malicious code, what happens is when you go to um, 
And when you open up those apps and use those free versions, a lot of times uh, they tend to take over and infect your computer and or direct you to a site where you can get your computer I infected and, and, and de thus, deliver a pay thus deliver a payload of uh, malicious code to cause your computer to do something. So let's get into some of the specifics in terms of what's going on now that we've explained malvertising and all that. Okay, Those running Spotify free on the desktop are periodically seeing strange browser behavior uh, with malicious ads serving malware popping up. Um, as a post on the Spotify user forum explains, if you have Spotify free open, it will launch and keep on launching the default internet browser on the computer um, to different kinds of malware virus sites. Some of these do not even require user interaction to be able to cause them. I, this is a user saying this. I have three different systems uh, or computers which are all clean and they're all doing this, all via Spotify. I am thinking it's the ads in Spotify free. I hope this has been noticed as Spotify staff are fixing it fast, but it's still puzzling something like this can actually happen. Well, I'm going to tell you it's not that puzzling actually because when you use free versions of advertising, uh, or free versions of apps, the advertising is a vulnerability and typically that's exactly where the, um, the, the hackers go. So the Twitterati are the people on Twitter who love Twitter and, and, and tweet out these things to us so we'll be informed. The Twitterati were quick to complain. Had a malware on my Ubuntu desktop that kept opening random ads on my browser every minute. Luckily, uh, at Spotify client was easy to un uninstall, said um, at Sam Nutomo. Okay, this is a, one of their users. Um, users on Windows 10, uh, Ubuntu, and, and Mac OS have all reported the issue. Um, so this is Tara Calvi tweeted the customer service handle Spotify Cares. This is a t their Twitter service handle, customer service handle at Spotify Cares. Yesterday, the Spotify free software started launching malware on my Mac's Safari on its own. Uh, many have, uh, have, have had the same experience. For its part, Spotify responded in the user forum saying that it has placed the issue under investigation. Okay? Malvertising happens when bad actors hijack online ad networks, usually without the host site, in this case Spotify being the wiser. The malicious ads then redirect users to sites where exploit kits drop payloads ranging from ransomware to banking trojans, often without user inter interaction. A malvertising attack was recently found to be mounted on the popular website Answers.com, which receives 2 million visits daily. In that case, uh, visitors who browse the knowledge-based website Answers.com are exposed to fraudulent and malicious adver advertisements and, can, and could be infected with ransomware on a drive-by basis, even, even, even without having to click on an ad. So again, uh, you guys, looks like some of these uh, payloads that are dropped into that malvertising network, or the, the ads network, they don't even require that you do anything. If you go to that site without clicking on anything, it looks like that payload is actually designed by the hackers to uh, infect your computers and cause the, um, the malicious code to execute. We've seen an increase in malvertising of this kind, said Raul uh, Kashyap. Uh, EVP, I, I think that stands for Executive Vice President, and Chief Architect at Bromium. Last year, our threat sensors found over a quarter of the Alexa 1000 websites were delivering malware via malicious ab advertisements. This is something that enterprises need to think about as users see their desktops as personal devices. Okay, uh, threats like these will always find their way into the corporate network unless you completely lock down a user's desktop. Which is, uh, in which, is, which is not practical. You'll always have experience, you'll always experience uh, uh, user-introduced vulnerabilities. Uh, this is, um, this, this gentleman, Raul Keshop, is basically saying that um, uh, a lot of times we try to educate users, our employees, etc., our customers, for instance, in terms of what to look for and how to look out for these things, but we need to do more in the security industry and, and, and the manufacturers uh, of, of devices you guys need to do more also in terms of making sure that 
you do more to make these devices secure. If the computers and the laptops and, the, and different devices are secure in the first place, well, then that way the users and the customers can just use the devices without being security experts themselves. So I, I, I kind of like disagree, but I, 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 have, I agree, but I, I have to disagree in a certain, in a, because of that particular um, approach there. Uh, he added, instead of trying to change human behavior, which I agree with, Companies should accept that users are always going to be the weakest link in the security chain. The trick is to contain the threat so the enterprise isn't placed at risk. The ideal way to do this is to shrink the attack surface by isolating the endpoint. The endpoint means the actual hardware that um, is being used at that time, whether it's a laptop, desktop, or some other peripheral device, whatever it is. Um, by isolating the endpoint, so doing things like clicking on links or downloading documents is contained, uh, then even if, these, uh, even if that action introduces malware, it can't go beyond that point. So I, I agree with that point. Okay, so that's it for the Spotify situation. So moving right along, IoT DDoS attack warning as Mariah, I think that's Mariah Malware Leaked. That's M I R A I, Mariah. Uh, I think, uh, malware leaked. Uh, experts are warning of a new wave of IoT botnet-based DDoS attacks following two of the biggest ever seen in recent days after source code for the Mirai malware was released. Okay, so basically someone uh, released a uh, botnet, uh, the coding for the botnet, which basically harnesses... Um, Lots of dumb devices and, and, and pulls them together and, and you can use these as a way to hack or a way to cause a disruption on the internet to, to launch a major DDoS attack. So again, we're talking about code released into the wild. So any, anyone and everyone can get a hold of it and launch major DDoS attacks. That's what we're talking about here. A user going by the moniker Anna Senpai, I think that's uh, Senpai, S-E-N-P-A-I, leaked the data onto the hack forum site on Friday, according to Krabs on Security. Uh, Krabs is a major security outfit. Krabs on Security, which was taken out by a 620 megabyte um, uh, attack facilitated by Mariah days before. So 620 Mbps is a major, major amount of data that's being thrown at uh, particular uh, websites, okay? And Krebs was pretty much taken out of commission by this major DDoS um, stream of data that was thrown at his website. Uh, the malware apparently works by scanning the web for IoT devices, which are only protected by factory default or hard-coded credentials. Once identified and infected, they are co-opted into a botnet, which can be directed to launch DDoS attacks at will. Um, the black hat who released the code claimed to be doing so in response to improved security from the internet community. With Mirai, I usually pull a maximum of 380k bots from Telnet alone, they claimed. However, after the crab, uh, after the crab DDoS, uh, ISPs been slowly shutting down and cleaning up their act. Today, maximum pull is about 300k bots and dropping. Okay, Stephen Gates He's a chief research intelligence analyst at NS Focus. I've been reading about NS Focus a lot in terms of uh, learning about cybersecurity as well. So that's an excellent uh, resource. NS, like, uh, like Nancy, Sam, Focus, um, argued that unless IoT device manufacturers improve security, these kinds of DDoS, um, uh, these kinds of DDoS, could take out large parts of the internet and cause crippling uh, brownouts. So, uh, yeah, Stephen Gates is telling us right now that uh, because of these, um, because of this bit of um, malware has been released into the wild, we could expect uh, further and further and, and greater, greater uh, uh, disruptions on the internet. But <clears throat> the solution is, <coughs> excuse me, the solution to this is simple. Manufacturers must do a better job of either ensuring that each device has a unique default password or they must force users to change their password once the, defa when the, defa once the default is entered when the device is first installed, he argued. One way of ensuring that each device has a unique password is to etch the de device's default username and password 
on the unit itself. Even if a user did not change the default password, a hacker would have to gain physical access to the unit to determine its default username password combination. This would go a long way uh, to solving the problem if every device shipped with a different combination of login credentials. I actually think this is a very good idea because when you think about it, if each and every router, each and every um, smoke detector, uh, each and every uh, network DVR, whatever it is, where, um, uh, camera, if each and every one of them has a unique password etched onto the box, well then, the, the, like, like you mentioned, the hackers typically don't go around the whole entire country into each and every home and office and take a look at the username and password etched onto the devices. So um, they would have to somehow gain entry, get that username, get that password for each and every device that then launch a major DDoS attack, which is pretty much impractical and almost going to be impossible. So I think he's onto something here. One way of ensuring that each device has a unique password is to etch. Okay, we covered that. Uh, Reiner Kappenberger, a global product manager at, at HPE Security, added that security is often an afterthought, which I agree with. Uh, in, the, in the race to commercialize products. For those manufacturing devices, they should consider things like a data-centric security approach that helps pre uh, prevent data leakage, leakage and access in order to protect their customers uh, properly, he argued. Okay. Innovative technologies such as industry standard format preserving encryption can protect data at the data level and in the IoT mobile applications. In connected devices, uh, and in and, and, and the enterprise back-end systems, okay? Uh, despite the perception amongst manufacturers that consumers favor usability, low cost above, uh, usability and low cost above security, a recent uh, PRPL foundation report claimed 42% of global consumers would pay a premium for more secure devices, nearly one-third or 32% said security concerns prevent them, or prevent them from buying uh, IoT, uh, 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 from, from buying an IoT uh, and, and kit. So what they're basically saying there is um, consumers are getting more and more um, concerned and more and more knowledgeable or educated about uh, the IoT devices. And the idea that if I pay just a small premium, for protection, a uh, so sort of warranty or guarantee uh, that's going to limit my um, ability, li limit the hacker's ability to get into my routers and, and DVRs and cameras, um, that will go a long way. So people are starting, the customers are starting to say, yeah, go ahead and um, make my device a little bit more stronger as far as security is concerned, and I'll pay, I'll pay extra for that. So that's probably something that's, that's, that could work out in our favor. So moving right along. Um, MasterCard accelerates death of password with selfie uh, pay rollout. Again, MasterCard accelerates death of password with selfie pay rollout. Okay, and what this means is uh, credit card giant MasterCard has been the long-awaited rollout has begun the long-awaited rollout of its identity check mobile feature. Again, this is called identity check mobile feature, better known as pay by selfie across Europe, promising. Improved friction-free authentication for users. The service will go live soon across 12 markets, including the UK, Spain, Sweden, Germany, and the Netherlands. U use a, uh, uses facial biometrics to verify a user's identity, meaning they don't have to remember yet another password to complete a transaction. Um, it will also work the same way using a fingerprint scanner on the device if the user has one. Okay, so again, MasterCard is going to be taking a look at um, requiring users uh, who are doing e-commerce and doing certain things on, online or whatever uh, to verify that they are indeed the right person by taking a selfie and using a finger and or using a fingerprint. Okay, so this means that if you go to an e-commerce site, uh, they may require you to take a selfie, and um, if there is any in, any uh, idea that you may not be you the uh, user may be required to blink or do something so that uh, the, um, we get the proper authentic authentication and, and, and the transaction is thus made more secure. Okay? The technology has already uh, undergone trials in the Netherlands, the U.S., and Canada and will be rolled out globally next year. 
The idea is that offering customers a simpler way to a simpler way to authenticate will ensure fewer abandoned purchases or have a, or have one decline if they enter a password in, incorrectly. So we're trying to make the user experience um, more streamlined and more secure uh, at the same time. According to Mastercard research, 92% of consumers believe identity check mobile is more convenient than using passwords, and 83% rate, uh, rated it as more secure. Uh, Paco Garcia, CTO, Chief Technology Officer at, at authentication firm Yoti, uh, Y-O-T-I, argued the announcement um, is part of a, a wider move away from passwords. So again, uh, the trend is basically uh, actually to get away from passwords uh, and, and, and let it use my, uh, biometrics. So in, in the future, we're going to see the impl implementation of more and more biometrics and less and less uh, emphasis on passwords, definitely. Retailers are now under huge competitive pressure from digitally native mobile-focused customers who have become accustomed to contactless cards and mobile payments, he added. The key challenge for any of these selfie authentication solutions is ensuring the right live person is in front of their phone requesting payment and not a froster using a photo or video of another person. Okay? It is important for companies to take uh, the time to find a level of security that suits them and their customers. So basically they're saying that Going forward, you'll have your cell phone with you and uh, using fingerprint, using uh, biometrics such as, facial, such as facial recognition is definitely going to be the way to go. And they'll probably use location services of, on your phone to indicate that that's you in a certain place in, in the city and, and that that, um, that image on the, uh, in front, that, at the, at the image is, is actually you and you'll probably be prompted to smile, blink or something. So... It's going to be a few ways to prevent uh, uh, someone from, from committing fraud uh, with, go, uh, going forward with the new biometrics in, uh, implementations. However, there was a word of caution from Robert Page, lead pen tester at Redscan, R-E-D-S-D, uh, Redscan, R-E-D-S-D-C-A-N. Mm. Okay, that's spelled kind of differently. If biometric formation, if, I'm sorry, if biometric information is captured and used by an attacker, it is not possible for a user to change his or her imprint uh, as they would a password, he argued. MasterCard's implementation of facial recognition requiring a user to blink appears to be a novel solution to prevent others from taking a picture of a user. Um, the effectiveness, the effectiveness of its implementation uh, is yet to stand the test of time. So basically, they're saying that this is a work in progress, and it looks like um, it's definitely going to be uh, something that a lot of companies are going to be putting a lot of emphasis on, particularly credit card uh, issuers and banks and financial institutions. Okay, so um, moving right along, biometric breakthrough replaces Wi-Fi with the human body. Now, this particular article is very fascinating, and I think you guys want to pay attention to this one. Things are getting more and more sci-fi all the time. What with artificial intelligence, biometrics, and holograms are becoming commercial reality. But University of Washington researchers have pioneered a new wrinkle. On-body trans transmissions, that's O-N-body transmissions, where the body can take the place of Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or other network. Talk about singing the body electric, <laughs> as Walt Whitman once wrote. More specifically, the UW engineers, um, the University of Washington, uh, the university engineers devised a way that the data that authenticates identity can travel securely from a phone through the body to a receiver embedded in a device. So a user types a password onto a phone while touching, say, a smart door lock or wearable medical device. So again, in plain English, you have one hand on your phone's um, fingerprint scanner or something, and the other hand will be on a, the, you know, the point of access that you want to get access to, or like a door lock or whatever that may be, to get into your place of work or your home. Uh, maybe even touching a laptop uh, key, uh, touchpad or something that's going to further identify you. Um, sending a password or secret code over airborne radio waves like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth Bluetooth means anyone can eavesdrop, making these transmissions vulnerable to hackers who can attempt to break the encrypted code. But using benign, low-frequency transmissions within the body eliminates the man-in-the-middle uh, danger. Okay, so again, going through the body, 
uh, without going through the air, it seems to be uh, something definitely a lot of researchers are going to be looking at. Fingerprint sensors have so far been used as an input device. What is cool is that we've shown for the first time that fingerprint sensors can be re repurposed to send out information that is confined to the body, said senior author Shyam uh, Galotica, a UW assistant professor of computer science and engineering. The technique is described in a paper presented in September at the 2016 Association uh, for Computing Machineries International Joint Conference on Pervasive Ubiquitous Computing. Okay, that's the UBI Comp uh, 2016 that took place in Germany. Let's say I want to open a door using an electronic smart lock, uh, said co-lead author Mar Mar Mardad Hassar, a UW electrical engineering doctoral student. I can touch the doorknob and touch the fingerprint sensor on my phone and transmit my circuit credentials through the body to open the door without leaking that personal information over the air. Okay, it's a research team tested their technique on iPhone and other fingerprint sensors, as well as Le Lenovo laptop trackpads and the add a fruit capacitive touchpad. Uh, in tests with 10 different subjects, they were able to generate usable on-body transmissions on people of different heights, weights, and body types. The system also worked when subjects were in motion, including while they walked uh, and moved their arms. We showed that it works in different postures like standing, sitting, and sleeping, said code lead, uh, code lead author Vikram Iyer, a UW electrical engineering doctoral student uh, we can also get a strong signal throughout your body. The receivers can be anywhere on your leg, chest, hands, and still work. So again, this seems to be a very novel approach in terms of using biometrics and using the body, uh, sending a signal, believe it or not, um, through the body after touching your phone with one hand and then touching uh, uh, maybe a laptop, maybe a doorknob or something that's going to receive this electrical impulse and, and, the, and again, the uh, idea is to get away from the idea, get, a, get in the way from, get it away from the opportunity of having wireless signals intercepted because this will go through the body and there won't be, it's going through the air where someone can intercept uh, the, the, the transmission or the data. Okay, so moving right along, real-time phishing emerges in Brazil. Uh, a real-time phishing campaign is targeting Brazil. This tactic is design, designed to emulate a banking Trojan by extracting critical data from its victims in real time via a live interactive phishing attack. According to IBM X-Force, the phishing scheme takes place over a web session between the attacker and the victim. Uh, it is able to mimic a target website's look and feel more so than just an idle phishing page. Interesting. From, a, from afar and behind the scenes, cyber criminals impersonate the victim's bank and ask for all kinds of account details uh, data stolen through interactive phishing can be commercialized on underground boards. Most likely, the criminal will access the compromised account from the bank's website to make a transaction in real time, all the while milking more authentication details from the unsuspecting victim, they said in a blog post. The emergence of this new method will likely contribute to rises in fraud in Brazil over the coming months. Uh, typical tactics include sending emails impersonating the bank, Redirecting users to fake sites, deploying farming attacks, uh, that's P-H-A-R-M-I-N-G attacks, inducing malicious proxy changes or launching fake windows or images on the victim's desktop to rob access credentials, account information, card data, and personality, personally identifiable information. Uh, but, uh, but out of all of these, there's one downside. Have, uh, they have one downside. Most banks require users to provide personal details in real time to authentic authenticate customers uh, doing digital transactions. So this is another way of uh, getting in the middle of customers and the real website. So um, the idea is to not click on any links. The idea is to go to your uh, actual bookmarked website page for your bank or, or, or other e-commerce site don't rely upon any third-party uh, sources, for instance. Make sure you, thank you, uh, whoever that was. Uh, make sure you use your bank's um, bookmarked page and you don't give out information. Uh, thanks, Carolyn. And that way you can um, make sure that you're at the right site, okay, versus uh, a real-time hacked site that's just going to be begging you 
and trying to get you to uh, give up information. Okay, uh, uh, interactive. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Carolyn. Says it's great information. Thank you. Uh, using this type of interactive attack, criminals can better person impersonate the uh, victim's trusted bank or service provider. IBM noted. Furthermore, with information being delivered from the victim according to the attacker's request in real time, the chances of success are much higher. Uh, interactive man in the middle uh, phishing demonstrates increased sophistication, making attacks more believable through real time data theft. And the platform being used to carry it out is available on the dark web as a productized offering. The commercialization factor amplifies the prevalence and risk of any online threat, said the researchers. The same kit can be adopted to target any bank in any country. Service providers must acknowledge this risk and mitigate it ahead of, a t it ahead of time. So basically, you guys, what they're saying is um, there's, there's, uh, uh, there's going to be fake banking websites, fake banking apps, fake uh, e-commerce sites that are going to look like, feel like, and act like the actual, the actual site, but they won't be the right, the right site, they won't be the right app, they won't be the real, the real deal. And you have to use your, um, your, 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 your saved information, not some um, redirect uh, as a result of you going to an email or going through a, the text message or anything like that. Don't use any other link except the one you saved or the one the bank gave you. If you have any questions, call the bank and make sure that you have the current URL and that it's been verified by the bank itself. So moving right along, uh, the G20 summit attacked over 133,000 times. Okay, The latest G20 summit, which is basically a gathering of the major countries uh, for a summit in terms of discussing certain uh, important um, uh, issues. Hackers launched over 133,000 cyber attacks against the G20 network at a recent meeting of world leaders in China, according to security vendor NS Focus. The firm was hired by China's Ministry of Public Security to provide round-the-clock uh, protection for the event, which is always a honeypot for nefarious online activity. In total, it defended 133,254 attacks on the G20 network and a further 1.9 million attacks against organizations which provide services to the summit. Uh, stepping stone attacks targeting third parties is an easier route into an organization or a commonly used, or a commonly used tactic. So this is a very common, commonly used tactic is what they're saying. Contractors were compromised uh, to infiltrate the Office of Personnel Management um, uh, a long time ago, uh, 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 almost a year ago, I think, and retailer Target, leading to, leading to the breach of tens of millions of, of, of records. So again, they're saying that basically this is a, um, a well-known tactic and that um, a lot of times it's not the, ma not the main company, it's not the main website, it's not the main retailer that gets compromised. It's the vendors, it's the suppliers, it's some weak link further down in the chain that gets compromised. And uh, as they found out with the G20 summit, um, they went through a staff member, I think, in this case, we'll get to that, but they went through an a, a, a indirect means to, to, to hack um, that, that particular organization's um, uh, website, okay, uh, and network, okay. So uh, there were uh, 169,919 web attacks on G20 and G20 affiliated networks. And 1,984 DDoS attacks, according to NS Focus, was more the vendor found 600,356 vulnerabilities, of which 190 were high risk uh, prior to the summit, highlighting the importance of web scanning and effective patch management policies. Securing an event of this size and prominence of G20 is an enormous undertaking. Cybercrime is evolving, uh, evolving with hackers moving beyond traditional attacks to more advanced threats. And geopolitical conferences are always an ideal target for malicious activity, explained the firm's SVP of global threat research, Richard Zhao. In order to combat these threats and ensure the security of the summit, NS Focus took a holistic approach and implemented an integrated and layered security solution to protect the G20. As a result, as a result the event uh, carried on as planned and the striking number of incoming attacks did not disrupt activity. So believe it or not, uh, they were able to uh, concentrate on having the summit 
and NS Focus was a major player in terms of mitigating these particular issues. The G20 is always a big target for hackers attracting hacktivists um, out to make a point and state-sponsored operatives looking for geopolitically important information which could give their employers an advantage at the negotiating table. But sometimes employees at the event are their own worst enemy. At the Brisbane Summit last year, a hapless uh, member of staff accidentally exposed the personal information of several world leaders, including Barack Obama, Angela Merkel, uh, Yao Yanping, David Cameron, and Vladimir Putin by emailing them to an unattended, uh, unintended recipient. So again, um, staff members, employees, vendors, and suppliers, we need to make sure, again, as they pointed out, we need to take a holistic approach. Who is all connected to my network? And, and are, are they certified? Are, are, are we continually reviewing the, the policies of those organizations with mine and vice versa to make sure that we all have the tightest security uh, that, uh, possible? Because that's where the hackers will go. Okay, so moving right along, uh, SANS Institute to, uh, in IoT botnet warning. Again, the SANS Institute uh, is talking about a, 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 a Internet of Things botnet warning. The SANS Institute is urging security professionals to help monitor the Internet for attempts to compromise IoT devices after conf conf confirming that they're happening virtually every minute. The organization's Johannes Ulrich wrote in a new a new note that he ran a test using an old DVR connected to a normal cable modem internet connection, ensuring that it wouldn't be used to attack other systems. The sad part is that I didn't have to wait long. Okay, this is what Johannes is saying. The IP address is, is hit. The IP address was hit by telnet attempts pretty much every minute. Instead of having to wait for a long time to see an attack, my problem was that the DVR was often overwhelmed by attacks. And the telnet never stopped responding. Okay? The, the telnet server never stopped responding. I had to reboot it every few minutes, he explained. Not all attacks were successful. The attacks used various passwords, and my honeypot only allowed logins for one of them. But a couple of times an hour, someone used the correct password. Uh, the attacks all followed a similar pattern, according to Ulrich. They started with an attacker running commands to ensure they weren't connected to a router or common honeypot like Kari. So you guys, it looks like the attackers are getting uh, very sophisticated. They're, they're keeping an eye out for certain well-known honeypots um, and they're trying to find out whether or not uh, devices are indeed connected or, or not connected. And then they proceed with, their, with, the, with, the, with their, their attacks. So they're looking for dumb devices and they're looking for uh, common well-known honeypots and they're trying to avoid that or at least know what they're up against. So the hackers are getting very, very clever. This was followed by some additional fingerprinting before downloading binaries of only a few hundred bytes. So the, again, the hacker tactics. Soon after, they started scanning for more vulnerable IoT devices at more than 100 connections per second. Interestingly, I didn't see any attempt by these bots to reset the password. The DVR was left wide open to additional attacks, said Ulrich. During my experiments, the DVR was excessively attacked several times an hour. So again, this is just a regular DVR which a lot of us have in our homes and offices, and they are being used and they are being um, um, combined, so to speak. Uh, all, the, all the various DVRs that are vulnerable are being aggregated, put together, and you, al you, you launch a major DDoS attack using these additional machines on some unsuspecting victim. Okay? So uh, he urged security researchers to run the latest version of Cowry, C-O-W-R-I-E, on a honeypot in order to monitor any shifts in the type of passwords being uh, scanned for or, or a pattern of attacks on IoT devices. The SANS warning, uh, warnings come after two major botnet-based DDoS attacks within the space of a few days last week. First, Krebs on security, that's uh, K-R-E-B-S-O-N, on security, one word, was taken out, again, by a 620 MPBS blast. So this is a major blast, a major amount of data, a major DDoS attack aimed at uh, a, a particular target. So it's kind of hard to uh, defend against when your water hose is not as powerful as the other guys. So this is basically what you have. What you have. Uh, whoever has a stronger fire hose, for instance, is able to do more damage than the other guy. Um, 
Okay, the first crabs online was taken out by a 620 MPBS blast thought to be the biggest on record. Then French hoster OVH, a hosting company, OVH, Oscar Victor Harry, claimed a similar botnet had launched an attack in excess of one terabytes per second. Okay, so these um, uh, hackers are using major, major resources to launch these DDoS attacks, and they're record-breaking uh, in terms of their scope and size. So moving right along, noisy fans and fake deli coupons, uh, how hackers are winning. So again, noisy fans and fake deli coupons. Let me explain what that means. Okay, deli is D-E-L-I, like a, a delicatessen. In the race to come up with new and more sophisticated ways to evade, uh, invade victims, computers and networks, hackers will use any means necessary, even a computer's fan. In the race to come up with new and more sophisticated ways to invade vict uh, victims' computers and, a network and networks, hackers will use any means necessary, even a computer's fan, especially designed for highly secure computers that aren't even on a network. The fan's emitter, that's fan and, 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 and emitter, like, a, like fan and transmitter combined, F-A-N-S-M-I-T-T-E-R, the fan's emitter exploit is just the latest in a never-ending cycle of attacks, with hackers constantly upping the ante as companies come up with methods to defend their systems, except that the defenses, defenses are usually for last week's attacks and can't defend against all the zero-day exploits or permutations of existing exploits that hackers are constantly coming up with. Fansmitter is based upon the principle of air gap hacking, where a hacker uses a mobile device to listen in on the electromagnetic waves coming out of a computer. All it takes is infecting a nearby smart device with, with malware that can listen into an, the, the electromagnetic waves emanated by a computer. Those waves can communicate, for example, keystroke information that can include passwords, encryption keys, etc. Malware that has been installed on the computer scrapes for the data it's sent to find, and then it regulates the speed of the computer's fan to broadcast electromagnetic signals that reflect that information. The compromised smartphone records the wave patterns and transmit, transmits it back to hackers' headquarters. The result, even the safest computer that is completely disconnected from the internet, is exposed. So basically what they're saying is um, if you have a computer that's offline and you have a cell phone in the same office room where that computer is, by infecting your uh, phone with, with malware, now it becomes a listening device. And, and, and um, what happens is the um, fan on the computer um, is used to transmit information, okay? Okay, so it sounds like a far-out scenario, but if the computer's contents are important enough, an army of professional hackers for hire stands ready, willing and able to pull this off. Um, if they can get into a computer like that, they can, get, uh, they can get to anyone. Cleverly designed social engineering messages can, uh, it has been proven time and time again, convince almost anyone to click on a rogue link or open an attachment that includes a malware payload. Over 90% of hackers, uh, uh, hacker attacks, um, Hacking attacks initiate with such so, uh, with, with, with social engineering efforts, meaning that relying on relying on human intelligence, uh, re, um, resolving common sense to prevent hacking attacks is next to futile. Okay. However, it's not enough to trick people today. Uh, today's top malware has to fool security systems, avoiding detection by antivirus and anomaly detection systems like sandboxes to continue operating and sending information to its masters. So, um, yeah, you may want to take a look at that concept, uh, fansmitter, uh, F-A-N-S-M-I-T-T-E-R, fansmitter, because uh, it sounds like even um, uh, computers that are not connected to the um, Internet are going to be used uh, to get information over to a compromised smartphone, okay? And um, so they're using the fan somehow on, on the computer to... Um, send electromagnetic waves that kind of like um, 
give an indication as to what's being typed on the on the uh, keyboard. So because you know there's electromagnetic waves emanating from mouse movement, keyboard strokes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All of that is being uh, communicated, uh, if you will, over the air because of the you know the the way the fan is operating and electromagnetic waves electromagnetic waves emanating from the keyboard and the mouse, etc. And the, and the phone is now being um, the phone is now compromised, so it's going to pick up that information. Okay, here are some of the latest ways they are doing this. Webcam hacks. If the FBI director covers his webcam, there must be a good reason. Actually, more than seventy thousand reasons, according to a two thousand and fourteen article by Network World columnist Miss Smith, which states that hundreds of thousands of users are being monitored via their webcams with hackers able to access them because users do not change the administrative login password on the most popular models. So you guys, you got you to gotta open up your packages, change the default password and username, and change it often. Okay, I don't care how dumb the device is, whether or not it's a, a webcam, whether or not it's um, some other peripheral, um, wireless router, DVR, whatever it is. Um, it, 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 if, if it has a password and a username, uh, change it from what the manufacturer gave you and keep changing it uh, probably every three to six months. Okay, If a hacker is able to worm his way or her way, his or her way, way into a computer or laptop by acquiring the credentials of a user, he or she can easily access the webcam to view a user's office, kitchen, living room, or anywhere else IP-connected cameras are deployed. What what could they do with those images? Well, they could sell them to local criminals who could use them to canvas their premises from the inside, looking for ways to easily break into a house. So again, if they compromise your webcam and and they're, and they're watching you and, and and logging and noting and mapping out your home, then they know exactly how to break into your home and get away with stealing everything without um, without worrying so much about people. Uh, um, without worrying so much about where you know, where do you, where room do we go into, which room do we not go into, where where are you in the home, are you at home or not? So all, all this becomes um, you know doable uh, by compromising those webcams. Uh, phony images, okay. During okay, phony images, okay. During this feverish political season, season, everyone has an opinion, and everyone is ready and willing to believe the worst about their uh, candidates, depending upon whom they support. But if someone sends you a link that lets you download images of Hillary Clinton in a compromising position or of Donald Trump beating up Mexican workers at his casino, resist the urge. The image could be a cleverly designed image exploit. The exploit is a reboot of an old data concealment technique called uh, steganography, okay? used in the past by spies and secret agents to leak or hide data. The technique involves strings of code embedded in an image that once decoded can be used to execute malicious code to upload or download data from a computer or device. Uh, in the latest takeoff on this technique, hackers send out a phishing, phishing message that urges users to click on a link where they will get a view of some uh, lasci lascivious images which may or may not, which, which they may or may not even get. As long as you click on it, that's what's important for the hackers. Along with that image, they will get an invisible payload that will install malware that imports other images of this invisible payload. I'm sorry, uh, other images of this type, seeking uh, them out on social media. When it finds one, it automatically downloads and parses it, releasing code that will perform actions like surreptitiously uploading files to a cloud site. Uh, difficult to detect. The technique has already been used by Russian hackers. To, to steal data from companies. Um, let's see, we have a, a, a few more items that we're going to cover. Let's see what's more important. Uh, Geo-targeted hacks. Let's see what this one is all about. And uh, Geo-targeted hacks and malware are now a hot item on the dark net with... Um, with malware that lets hackers choose specific countries, cities, and even neighborhoods to target. Some of the most common campaigns target victims in specific areas with phony email messages from local companies or tax agencies with email messages containing a malicious attachment, such as a Microsoft Word documents or JavaScript, or a link to a web page that will automatically download malware. 
With all that, however, it pays to remember that bottom line. Remember the bottom line. Without the phishing component, that's the ability to send you an email message and have you click on the link. Without the phishing component of these attacks, none of them could take place. Something for the IT uh, the company's IT folks to keep in mind when developing a defense uh, plan. Okay? Uh, so we heard about the, uh, uh, moving right along, we heard about the Indian uh, police detaining workers over possible uh, IRS phone scam. Okay, that basically resulted in their capturing. The people who were doing the IRS phone scam whereby they call you, convince you that, you know, you're going to go to jail if you don't pay a certain amount of money in taxes. And so you, you pay the money immediately, and, but you don't realize that these are actually scam artists in India. And the Indian police, uh, thank goodness, have... Um, uh, jailed these guys. They found them and jailed them. Okay, they were making probably $100,000 a month or so. Um, let's see what else we have to cover. Okay, so it looks like um, we're going to have in the show notes um, a lot of this additional information uh so that um you can you can read okay this is kind of important uh step up your smart home security now connected cameras and other smart home devices promise a jetson x like the jetsons jet jetson x f- future but as a recent hacking of more than 100,000 networked cameras and dvrs demonstrates they also provide fertile ground for hackers Okay, this is what I was referring to you guys about uh, dumb devices that you typically wouldn't associate with uh, hackers breaking into them or getting into them and using them. This is this is this is explain this um, uh, section explains that thoroughly. Okay, you should make the assumption that anything that's internet accessible is hackable. If it has a camera or a mic built in, it can be taken over," said Kenneth White, a security researcher and director of the Open Crypto Audit. Project that's Open Crypto Audit Project, a nonprofit that promotes cybersecurity. To protect yourself, you have to have the right perspective. You need to take that. You need to take this seriously, okay? But not. But don't be afraid of it either. He said. Once you accept that hacking happens, embrace the security at your disposal. Here are some easy tips to help you step up your smart home defenses. Research before you buy. If you're shopping for any smart home device. Search online to see how often its maker issues security updates and how open they are about security vulnerabilities when they do inevitably happen, okay? Um, If they don't talk about security, that's a red flag. And the less you pay, the less protection you can expect, okay? So there is a correlation between, again, you guys, how much you pay versus what you get in the way of security, especially. If the camera is $50 or $99, its security features are going to be bad, said Mr. White. Update their firmware. Use the instructions that come with the device. Often you can do this with the product's application. Uh, Even update a brand new product because this can change day to day. If the product has an auto updating option, use it. Set a calendar reminder, you guys, every month to check for updates on all of your cameras, thermostats, and other smart home products. Change the password. The base, uh, I'm sorry, the best bang for your buck hackers get the best bang for the buck the hackers get is from trying the default username and password for popular devices thousands of times over. So again, they're, they're looking for default passwords, looking for default user, usernames, and that's what, that way they can get the most of effect with the, with the cheapest cost as far as hackers are concerned. Um, it is best to use secure passwords and to not use the same password for all of your devices and accounts. If you have trouble coming up with good passwords and remember them and remembering them, a password manager like Dashlane can help. Secure your router. Your router. That means updating firmware, changing the default admin, login, choosing a new, strong, unique password. As I mentioned earlier, while many products such as cameras have online logins that your router can't defend against, it never helps to leave your, your it never helps to leave your network's front door wide open. If you don't already have your Wi-Fi security set to WPA2. Do it now. All new gadgets will support it, and if it doesn't, don't buy it. So again, WPA2 on the router is an essential. Okay, that's a must. And uh, now uh, there's no reason to not use it, you guys, because the uh, smartphones, the smart TVs, and the other devices will definitely accept WPA2 once you uh, implement that on your router. 
Okay, create a network for devices. And this is pretty cool. This is good information. Create a network for devices only. Okay, to be extra careful, use a new a newer router to create a separate Wi-Fi network that only your smart home devices use. This keeps them from falling prey. Um, uh, this this keeps them from falling prey via vulnerable PCs. Also, if a if a smart home is compromised, it won't be. It, it, it won't give hackers access to your home computers. So if your if your uh, business computer, for instance, is on a different network as as compared to your uh, your other smart home devices, that's a safer approach. So you can have two networks: one where um, uh, games or other devices are are located on that network, and then you have another network uh, for where you you know where you can do your banking and your business and all of that. That way, uh, hackers will be confined to one network, hopefully the, the, the one that's less uh, important to you, okay? Um, point your cameras with care. Assume that your internet-connected connect, internet cameras can be hacked. That means you should limit the number of cameras you have pointed inside your home. Um, um, point your cameras with care. Assuming that your internet-connected cameras could be, could, can be hacked, that means you should limit the number of cameras you have pointed inside your home especially in your bedroom. And if you don't trust yourself to keep your connected video baby monitor up to date, uh, best to buy an old-fashioned audio-only one. Ask your service provider. If, if you have an installer for home security and automation, be it ADT or a local firm, ask your provider about firmware updates. Often providers will ensure that their hardware is updated. However, if they say that you are responsible, ask for detailed instructions. Buy new hardware. Some older gadgets will simply leave you vulnerable, especially if you don't have networked, network engineering know-how. Uh, newer products have smarter security features and are easier to keep up to date. If the company that made your device isn't selling that model anymore or offering security updates, that's a good, good sign uh, for you to throw it in the garbage. Mr. White said, okay? So basically what this amounts to, this, guy, uh, this, this uh, particular session, you guys, this session is all about um, going through your, your 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 dumb devices, and we made a, um, a, a um, we made a, you know we threw in the, the humor of of, of of referring to toasters and, and hackers, and, you know, in the title. But this has everything to do with smart home devices. Your again, your your uh, your networked your your DVRs. Your, your smoke detectors, your thermostats, your routers, your webcams, all of these devices, they, they, you, we have to become more, uh, more serious about passwords, user, usernames, uh, WPA, you know, that encryption, uh, encryption scheme in, in your router. Implement that as soon as possible, and let's take more responsibility for what we can do on, on our end. Uh, sooner or later, we'll be able to put more pressure on manufacturers and such, to build in the type of security where we don't have to worry about it. You, you plug in something and the firmware automatically updates when the, when the manufacturer uh, gets an update, they push it out and it automatically updates or becomes a disabled. So we all know that it needs to be updated uh, manually if that's, net, if that's possible. But uh, again, older devices, a lot of them are going to be vulnerable. They're going to be weak. We need to go through our inventory of items that we have in our homes and see if we can start re replacing and, and getting new, more secure devices in our homes and offices that are going to have the security that we want and, and that we need and we deserve. So again, we appreciate it when you guys join us in these particular sessions. And as we always say, bring a friend, relative, associate, any, anybody back to the next session and let's find out how to make this uh, internet more secure and more um, a safe place for uh, doing business and, 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 and just having fun, okay? So I appreciate you guys uh, again and have fun and take care. Thanks. Stay safe.